Hey everybody, I'm Bodacious underscore 11, or Bo the Potato, and this is going to be my first video upload. Today we're going to take a look at jumping off the battle bus and trying to get to our drop spot just as efficiently as possible. And I do ask that if you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, uh, and also share any comments with me so you can help me learn how to get better. That way we can get more dubs together and I'll have a little bit more fun. With that said, we'll jump in and let's start taking a look at the Fortnite map. Hey guys, so we've got our map pulled up now, and we can take a look at a couple of those important spots around the map that I think are helpful anyway to be aware of where they are, how high they are, and how that might impact the drop that we're coming down on. The first place we're going to take a look at is going to be Mount K. Uh, Mount K is about 250 meters high, and that is found right above the weather station here in kind of the uh, southeast corner of the map. The next place that's good to know, uh, and it's really not a specific place, but sea level, uh, anywhere around the map is going to be zero meters high. It may sound kind of simple, but again, I'm a potato, and so I forget simple things like these quite often. And the last one is going to be Coral Castle. Since Coral Castle is sunken in and a little bit kind of recessed below sea level, that's actually about minus 20, minus 30 meters somewhere in there. And it doesn't make a huge difference when it comes to kind of management of your overall drop when it comes to the jump from the battle bus. Because when you place a marker and you're out looking at that marker, it's always going to do a direct line of sight point uh, as far as how far away that is. So again, maybe not as much of our concern, but we'll understand a little bit more about how those numbers are important when it comes to jumping out of the battle bus and exactly how high you are when that happens. So we will go to a little bit of a lower tech analysis for that piece, and we'll start that now. Alright, now let's dive into those rough numbers. So as we're getting ready to jump out of the battle bus, the first thing we're going to want to know is how high up we are when we jump out. So that first number is 900 meters, and that's where we do jump from the bus and begin our fall from there down to our landing spot. Next is at 150 meters. This is where we're going to get our glider pop. And from here we're going to want to know that you can travel about 500 meters from the time the glider pops in lateral distance until we get to the ground. And again, this is over just a flat distance, uh, but it does get more complicated as we start to consider the various terrain and hills and whatnot that we have on the map. So knowing these two numbers, 150 meters high and 500 meters of lateral distance, we can build a triangle and do some quick calculations. So we can figure out how many meters away uh, we should be from that target when the glider pops. We'll solve this with the Pythagorean theorem. That is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or in our case, 150 squared plus 500 squared is gonna equal our target squared. So carry that out, 22,500 plus 250,000 is going to be equal to the square root of 272,500, which gives us 522.01, which for 522 meters diagonal over the 500 horizontal from that glider pop really says that we're going a lot of distance per meter that we come down there. And so the hills, again, are going to be a much bigger factor than really the glide itself, because it's almost straight out. So let's pick our drop. 900 meters high from the top of the battle bus. Now we could use that full 522 meters of glide distance if we popped uh, about as is shown in this image here. And that was our drop target there right at the uh, top of the hill uh, below the foot of our mountain. This normal manual glider pop would get us to the target, no troubles at all. And again, like I said, 522 meters is roughly going to be our travel on that one. But this leaves more than 150 meters, as we can kind of estimate by this visual, of distance down where we could have fallen lower and popped the glider. And knowing that angle that we have, we can start to look at this just a little bit differently. So we'll take the same 900 meter jump from the bus, but we're going to make it so that the glider is forced open as late as possible to still hit this same drop target. 
So we're going to take our old trajectory that we had looked at and slide it in just a little. So we're again getting that mandatory glider pop at 150 meters. And that's actually going to save us quite a bit of distance on our total glide. This improved glider pop, again, just roughly estimating by what we see there, could be something like half of what we saw before, around 261 meters. And if we save half that gliding distance, uh, there's a couple things that we essentially learn from that. Is that one, the lowest possible drop is going to minimize glide time. And two, the less time you're gliding, the faster you touch the ground. And so what those two things together tell us is that we want to aim for the lowest possible point that still allows us to reach our target. So we're going to take this a step further in choosing the drop. What if we want to go somewhere much higher? Say we set the drop target right on top of this mountain here. You'll notice that the 150 meters down can be quite significantly further below where we're trying to get to and therefore we can almost travel no horizontal distance in order to hit our target. In this case it might be as small as maybe 30 meters and that's a very short amount of time gliding to when you can actually be picking up a weapon and getting ready to defend yourself. So keep that in mind that drops near steep inclines can have almost no gliding time. And then a couple other notes that we also want to consider as we're hopping out of the bus. Uh, the bus route. Uh, how hot do you want your drop? Of course, the closer we are to the bus route, the hotter things are going to be. And the earlier we are on the route, the hotter things are going to be as well. We also want to consider the loop pool. Uh, we want to land somewhere where we can get the items that we need. And that's going to be a little bit different for everybody's play style. Uh, think about mats. Uh, are you looking for wood, brick, or metal early on? Uh, gears or bones, depending on if you like the primal or mechanical weapons. Uh, NPCs, if they're around, uh, if they have something you might want, or if they might be helpful to reach for some other reason, maybe challenges or what have you. Uh, rare chests, uh, the bunker chests are still in, or barrel chests, and that could be a factor. Next, we're also going to want to think about backup landings. Uh, what if you miss your spot? What if your spot's taken? Uh, a lot of times I will have somebody still beat me to my spot as much as I try, and I'm going to have to go around or choose something different in order to not die right away. It does happen quite a bit, being the potato that I am. Uh, also think about whether you're playing solo, duo, trios, or squads, because the landing location that you choose needs to have enough loot for your squad going there. Uh, even if you come down at, say, Lighthouse, that won't work very well for a full squad. Even with the house nearby, you guys are probably going to be short weapons, and it's going to be tough to get out uh, and have an effective start to the game. And lastly, we'll ask about other mobility. Uh, are zip lines nearby? Are there hills that you can slide down to more quickly get to where you're trying to go? And in Chapter 2, Season 6, we also have the spires. And if in our live drops we get a good spot for it, I'll try to show you a cool way to get down to at least retail row very quickly. I do also want to add that uh, these kind of considerations, really as far as the glider pops for the most part, uh, don't apply to Team Rumble, uh, because in Team Rumble and many other LTMs, you're going to have different automatic glider pop heights. Uh, and I don't know this for certain, but sometimes it feels like that glide trajectory is just a little bit different as well. So, now it's time to actually drop in. So let's check it out and see what we can do. We're going to drop in now and see if we can't have some awesome drops and really break it down and see if we can't be the first ones on the ground. As we talked about, the bus route is going to be pretty important in determining the uh, best way to, or the best spot that we actually want to drop in. So let's see what we've got and try to make the most of the situation. Bright Bomber? I've never gotten that skin. 
there's a there's a lot of the really popular ones that I just you know haven't haven't quite gotten behind. Maybe someday I'll, I'll grow up and be better. Now you guys are gonna see me be extra potatoey, uh, as I have not really had a chance to warm up yet. Uh, I did actually try to record this earlier today. Uh, got three or four really good drops in and realized I had my microphone muted so none of you could hear me for any of it and the video was wasted. Uh, but that's okay, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll make up for lost time. Alright, so on this route here, uh, this is actually a pretty good, uh, heck, this is a great drop for retail row. Uh, so I'm actually going to come down near Dog House, but I'm going to come into the Spire first and see if we can't pull off this, uh, this little trick. Alright, so I'm going to wait till we're just under a thousand, oh, 850 is about the lowest I want to get on one of these drops. And again, I'm going to maximize going straight down as much as I can. Get the best drop and try to land on top of the Spire before popping back out to hit retail. And remember, I will still let you redeploy as long as you're over that 150 meters from the ground. Perfect, okay. So I'm going to pick this up. Pick this up. And launch right to one of the houses here. Back at retail. Alright, somebody's got a weapon there. Oh, maybe we can still drop on top of this guy. He probably didn't expect us to already have a weapon. Oh, that was rude. He didn't have a shot. He had the shotgun. So that's the, uh, the little shortcut towards a fast drop here at retail. Collect this gold while I can. And probably cut this video short unless I do particularly well. My main focus is showing you guys what I was doing on the drop. And that has been accomplished. So let's rush back into retail and see if we can't get into some more trouble. Like I said, we'll probably W key pretty hard here, just because that's by far the most interesting thing to do, and we're going for this, uh, hear him, nor do I know how I died that fast. I probably should have applied shield. That would have been a good thing to do. See, I get laughed at all the time. It's okay, I'm not sweating too hard. Hopefully I'll actually be able to post a couple of winning videos for you guys at some point. actually get to see me try to play smart too. Alright, looks like we're going in with the Diamond Han skin. And hopefully we can get another another decent drop and try to get to the ground before other folks. Uh, but hopefully you got to see a little bit of that that retail row drop. Not always perfect, but definitely surprises people when you come down with weapons. Go, loading island. Interesting. Alright, so we're coming straight across here. I'm trying to think of what would be a good one to show how 
we take advantage of the drop. Uh, so we'll probably do a little bit cooler of a drop now. Uh, dirty Docks is often, uh, we'll actually try this, this is often a really tricky drop, for me anyway, uh, because when we drop we can't necessarily rely on being able to go straight down and then off to our to our location. In a lot of places here like um, you know, everything like Pleasant Park, you know, Colossal, anything right along the bus line, you can go straight down and get to your location. But here we got to drop a little bit early. Uh, as I said in the last one, normally I like to drop, uh, you know, at the latest 850 meters above, uh, at the earliest 1200. So this one is tricky because, again, we have increasing or elevating ground as we approach. Uh, but we're going to come down a long ways after the initial drop. So here I try to get down a little earlier, given this high ground, knowing that the ground's basically going to fall out from under us. And you can see we're... Here's somebody else who's coming straight down. And we'll use this as a great example to show how we can get in just a little bit faster than most folks. get any weapons here, which we may not. I said, I'm a potato, so this guy's probably going to kill me. shots than I should have. too long, but... Did we have anybody else here? If we didn't have anybody else here, I might just call that good and jump from on high. Yep, we will call that good and get to one more drop for everyone. Oh. So hopefully that one helped just a little bit. I'm trying to think of another really good spot that we can show. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get to uh, either Opera Ski Lodge or maybe uh, Mount K. Uh, if we can do one of those, those would probably be a great start for us. And at some point, I might... Actually, I'm not even going to say I might. I just hope to get to the point where I can actually give some sort of education about editing and building, because I am super slow. Um, and also, I have no idea how other people on PC do it so quickly. Uh, personally, I am on PC. I've got like a one-handed keyboard. Uh, but I am just blown away by controller players and how they're able to edit the way that they do. Um, aiming, moving, everything. Uh, but again... Like I said, I'm a potato. Uh, I lose quite frequently, so. All right, what do we got on this drop? All right, so this is an interesting one. Uh, so there's a lot of low ground along the drop, uh, but I'm thinking it might be kind of cool to get Opry Ski Lodge up here. Uh, the way I'll probably do this one, I'm gonna look at roughly uh, kind of a triangle from uh, perpendicular to the battle bus line, and I'm looking at an isosceles triangle, roughly, uh, off that edge. So I think my departure is going to be right about here uh, to maximize to get to operate as fast as I can. And when I do that, I'm going to stay fairly high up uh, until somewhere around this hill where I'll dive down. And again, like I've said before, try to minimize that, that glide time.
I'm also going to watch and see. Of course, I think most of the folks are going to have jumped out the battle bus uh, reasonably early. Close to a thousand meters. So I'm going to start up high. If you look in the upper right, you can also see I've got a decent, a decent distance until my glider is going to pop automatically. You can see it kind of approaching that here. Uh, so I'm going to try to level out, and again, almost straight on. So I think this is pretty good for our prey. And I can't repop my glider, so let's see how close I come into this corner. And if anybody's behind me. So it doesn't seem like anybody tried to come with. Oh. One did. Probably just an AI. already finished the landing. Uh, hopefully that was a decent snapshot of how we can get down a little quicker at our prey here. Shockwaves. And I'm going to go get myself uh, deaded. Do, do, do. do I have a bounty that I can clean up down here real quick? It seems like it should be close. This bounty person. I'll kill the bounty and then I'll suicide myself. Where are you, bounty person? Are you up on the hill with me? That would be silly if they came back up behind me. platform, free emo, and what the heck, we'll take one of these. Let's see if we've got a mechanical part too. Alright, where is this bounty? Drop the SMG because I got the tagging pistol. And we'll just leave her over Jenkins. Come on, come on, bad dude. Boars down there. Why don't I see our person? Looks like he's right under me. Oh, I'm gonna have to edit this out. I don't know where he is. But he should have shown up by now. Is the person really like in this film? Hello? Oh. 
Free gold. Oh, do I hear someone? Something's going on. Don't have all the fun without me. My gosh, that was terrible. I thought that was an SMG. Well, what can I say? Potato. Uh, so that's an introduction to me playing Fortnite. You can see how quickly and how uh, easily I lose. <laughs> so I'll try to do a little bit better, warm up a little bit more. Um, but yeah, welcome to the uh, to the game. Hope to uh, see you on my channel more. Uh, enjoy, and everyone have a great night.